So we are live. Let's start with our session today. Namaste. Yes, uh, we can start with today's session, Gimchi. Namaste, everyone. Would request everyone uh, to be in a comfortable sitting position. Palms on the knees. Close your eyes. A few normal breaths in and out. We will start with Omkar chanting and Patanjali prayer. <laughs> Inhale. Inhale. One more time, inhale. Gently hold your palms, bring them to the chest. Yogi na chitta sya pade na vacham, malam sharira sya chavai dhyakena, yopa karutam pravaram munina, patanjalim pranjali rana tosmi. Namaste, good evening, good afternoon, good morning depends on which uh, corner of the world you are living in. I am uh, your host, uh, Bankim Shukla, student of uh, Swasti Yoga Center, welcoming one and all to International Yoga Festival. This is a noble initiative um, by Dr. Vikas Chaute and uh, Swetambarji Chaute. International Yoga Festival is a year-long health festival in honor of 75 years of India's independence. In this festival, also called Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, every Saturday and Sunday at 6 p.m. IST, renowned speakers, thinkers, scholars, and also young leaders of tomorrow, tomorrow's India and the world, share their experience, knowledge, expertise, and express their views. And today, we have such one young leader of India's and world's tomorrow, Vaidehiji Arge. Welcome, Vaidehiji. Thank you. Sir. Uh, let me let me give uh, everyone a glimpse of uh, Vaidehiji's inspiring journey. Uh, this has inspired me, and uh, I am sure that. This is going to inspire lots of youngsters, you know, who will hear this. Uh, Vaidehiji, you know, graduated as a physiotherapist recently, and now she's working at home. While she was in the final year, and when she had to do the project, then she got interest into yoga. And then she was adamant that she would like to do project on yoga. And that is where probably her shift to yoga started where she wanted to connect physiotherapy, patient and yoga all together. Absolutely marvelous. And then she went on to do 
yoga instructor's course. And now she is into yoga therapy. Absolutely wonderful, Vaidheji. And so her mission, uh, this, is, uh, this is what makes it really great, is that her mission is to connect all this physiotherapy, yoga therapy, connect them, you know, connect them to the patients and take this knowledge to the masses to make an improvement in the society. Thank you so much, Vaidheji. We just cannot wait to hear from you. So over to you. Yes, thank you so much, sir. I'll take on. So uh, as you know, I'm a physiotherapist. And so what will be covered in today's session will be obviously what is physiotherapy, how, what is yoga, and what is yoga therapy. So there is one physiotherapist who has um, brought up a new concept called as physio yoga. So we'll know about that also and the similarities and the differences between it. Next slide, please. Yes. So as a physiotherapist, I hope I do. Um... Okay, let's start. Physiotherapy is an healthcare profession concerned with human function and movement. It is concerned with identifying and maximizing quality of life and movement potential within the spheres of promotion, prevention, treatment, habilitation, and rehab. So these are the phases uh, from of a patient. So we promote health, then prevent it. So uh, and then treat it if any injury or anything, and then habilitate and rehabilitate. So physiotherapy is uh, very vast. So I I hope I do justice to uh, physiotherapy. So physiotherapists work within a wide variety of health settings to improve a broad range of physical problems associated with different systems of the body. They treat several systems like neuromuscular, brains and nervous system, musculoskeletal, soft tissue, joints, bones. Uh, so the musculoskeletal part, uh, we are more known for that. People uh, know if, yeah, if there is a physiotherapist, he will uh, be connected to a muscle injury or a bone injury they just, or a massage. Many of them know people, uh, know physiotherapists as muscles. So that is a completely uh, aware part of the population. But uh, the unaware part is that we do treat patients uh, of stroke and uh, heart patients, cardiovascular and respiratory, COPD patients, a lot of patients. So we do uh, elderly geriatric physiotherapy is there. And then there is prenatal uh, and obstructive guy also. The, this is also part of a physiotherapy. So that comes under community. So we have four major, major branches. One is orthopedics, musculoskeletal, and then there is neuro. So it, uh, all the stroke patients, the foot drop, wrist drop patients. So foot drop and wrist drop is a nerve injury, just to uh, just so that everyone knows. And then comes a community where old age people, pregnant women, uh, anything, hysterectomy patients, all that comes under community uh, therapy. And then there's cardiorespiratory. So any, any problem with the heart and the lungs. So a uh, major, uh, so please next slide. So I'll tell you a story before all this, I'll tell you a story how I got introduced to physiotherapy. I fell down in a road, road accident and uh, my ACL uh, was completely torn. So I was introduced to orthopedic uh, for the swelling and everything. He did everything. And then I got uh, ACL reconstruction surgery. So after the surgery, my ortho told me to do some exercises at home. A few exercises he gave me. And then I was introduced to a physiotherapist. So the physiotherapist told me what all exercises, how long to do and how many times to do and a protocol, a set protocol. Like you have to do this, this exercise uh, in the first week, this, this exercise in the second week. So that was how uh, I came to know physiotherapy. And then I was, I looked into it, searched into it, researched about it, looked into colleges uh, in Pune. And then that's how I got interest in physiotherapy, especially in the sports physiotherapy. 
so that is what people are like ha the sports medicine is also very common since cricketers or uh, um, gymnasts they are wearing all this colorful uh, sticker type uh, patties as you can see so that is how they know that okay a physio also is important in a sports category that is also famous then there is uh, because the uh, knowledge of physiotherapy is quite large pts tend to specialize in clinical areas so ortho cardio neuro pts also so there are a lot of um, conditions in uh, small children so down syndrome as you can as you guys know that also will can be treated so delayed milestone is a condition where uh, the growth of the child is not as it's supposed to be it's behind like if a child can walk in one one and 1.5 years he's not able to walk he's not even sitting so that's how we treat peds we also treat the condition so that is known as delayed milestone so rheumatology geriatric population in old age it's very common because uh, mostly our systems are going towards the down part of the life so they obviously need to keep it in keep it going keep it good in good conditions and there are many many problems related to old age as uh, i am also doing yoga therapy level 1 course so i relating it a little to how age can really affect the systems of the body so then there is mainly pain obviously we pain management is the first approach of of physiotherapist to any patient so there is women health uh pcod uh pregnancy postpartum all these conditions are also taught to physiotherapists then oncology there's little we can do but we still have um, research based uh, evidences for what a physiotherapist can do then public health general so physiotherapy can be summarized as pain management which is the first criteria like whenever a patient comes in and uh, to a physiotherapist we will usually start with pain so how is the pain why is the pain what is the pain so we'll do all the questions regarding the pain and we'll figure out a plan or any modality to uh, clear the pain first and then we'll go to the injury prevention rehabilitation part or the exercise a protocol so treatment usually includes hands on techniques if you uh, manual techniques uh, for example frozen shoulder so we do uh, mobilization techniques and manual techniques on the shoulder to increase the range of motion so many times frozen shoulder patients come with this range 90 degree and then we need to mobilize the joint glenohumeral joint the shoulder joint and so further we can increase the range so that's stretching so any tightness in any muscles we do have techniques like needling so needling technique is like there are small needles which we um, insert it in the muscle and uh, point it towards the uh, tight knot called as trigger points so we do puncture the trigger points and stretching helps it uh, the muscle to function properly then there's manipulation so manipulation is done to a lot of joints so uh, this is a uh, i hope people know chiropractic so people who they are also called bone setter for normal general public so those techniques manipulation techniques also of physio also can do that and exercise so in exercise there is a lot of variety so for uh, oa patient like in or osteoarthritis patients they usually have a uh, reduced joint space in the knee oa knee will take for example so they have a different set of exercises we give not to um, aggressive exercises and then there's athletes where uh, we push them a lot so we um, load the muscles as much as we can so the exercise can range from this to that so the modalities we use are electrical devices thermal devices so electrical devices uh, usually they are also called ift interferential therapy so we have a uh, medium frequency currents which help the 
they block the pain which goes towards your brain so you can feel less pain and with less pain you can do more better exercise and then the thermal devices just heating usually <laughs> this we do tell the patients to do at home just garam pani to pishli ne sheka that's it for 10 minutes it works wonders yes next slide please yeah so about yoga you everyone here is learning yoga so i don't need to explain this a lot so yoga originated thousands of years ago in india as an integrated physical mental spiritual practice based on the ancient vedic philosophy and is connected to ayurveda the system of traditional indian medicine during the 20th century yoga became increasingly recognized outside india and over the past decades it has continued to grow in popularity worldwide as a system of promoting health and well being and then yoga is a physical mental and spiritual practice that okay first codified by the sage patanjali in his yoga sutras around 400 ce so this is an important point for further um, explanation the practice was in fact handed down from teacher to student long before this text arose so yoga is much more um, ancient than one might think next slide so more about yoga it increases the flexibility of your body and as well as your brain emotional flexibility and control is very important so with yoga we tend to there are five koshas as you might know so we tend to look after each and every kosha whereas a physiotherapist only looks at a physical body that too if with evidence we do a lot of researches and then follow the protocol which is evidence based protocol and uh, emotional um, awareness or uh, emotional intelligence is not much is uh, important not much importance is given to it as a physiotherapy so all we um, think is okay the pa patient should be healthy in what case if you are treating the knee joint the pain should be reduced the strength should be uh, good and the stretching the muscles should be flexible enough so that is what functionally flexible we are talking about so in day to day life uh, we don't need to stretch as a uh, yoga poses demand us to stretch our bodies in day to day life we don't need that much uh, level of stretches in the muscle so we look at the functional way of stretching so yeah okay this is enough this is the functional way the muscle can work it's okay like that we do go in depth but then the patient discontinues till then he is like okay my pain is gone these are the exercises given i am done here the physiotherapist role is over so yoga goes beyond that it goes on a mental spiritual level in fact there are some people i have seen that they don't even believe in spiritual spirituality when they come to physiotherapy so i hope they get to know what yoga is and i do tell patients to like they can't come to a physiotherapist every day and physiotherapists are always found it works because pain they are treating pain and so after the the pain reduces i tell people i have started telling a lot now that do some exercise uh, follow some yoga whenever you are at home follow the home protocol and include yoga in it so yes there are eight limbs of yam um, uh yoga which all which everyone knows that is far away from physiotherapist we uh, we hardly tell patients how to behave outside uh, with with himself uh, with a no we don't do that so that is what is different a little different we don't start with that patient comes pain treated okay we don't care about how he behaves with us how he behaves outside with people what his uh, stress level is we do a little talking with the patient but not in depth as a yoga therapist or a yoga instructor uh, would do next slide please yes yoga therapy so this is uh, i have recently learned about yoga therapy i honestly didn't know what yoga therapy is but then i found it better so yoga therapy is intended to be an integrated practice of amplifying maintaining and restoring health 
during the various cycles of life, whether you are already active, looking to become active, or simply wanting to continue your beloved activities well into your golden years. Using this practice, you can make more conscious and proactive choices to support your health and longevity, which in turn can offer an enhanced experience of daily life. Yoga therapists can be uh, considered lifestyle management experts. This is uh, the best uh, sentence I could uh, find in the research papers. Lifestyle management experts, which they truly are. Since I'm learning, they do focus on every each and every aspect, your sleep, your eating habits, uh, your each and every minute of your day can, um, can be managed by a yoga therapist. So that training focuses on the therapeutic applications of yoga and includes philosophy, postures, and breathing exercises, meditation, mantra chanting, and lifestyle modification according to the principles of yoga. So majority of it is yoga. But in a way that, uh, okay, they do understand anatomy of the body, the yoga therapist in, in depth, and then they make choices about what practices to give, which asanas to give, what sh food should be avoided, what should be your intake. So yoga therapy, uh, it works on emotional body, nervous system, facial web, pain modulation pathways. It does work in some ways. Mental body, physical body, and deep visceral body, all the organs and the immune system. Yes. So the goal of a yoga therapist is not to treat a specific pain or illness, but rather to support improve physical, emotional, spiritual well-being. So all aspects in short. So you need to be happy. You need to feel happy. You need the body which uh, gives you happiness. So although yoga therapists aren't focused on fixing, the tools they offer, cli offer to clients typically facilitate healing and often result of resolution of pain or disease. Yoga therapist, so this, it does include uh, diabetic patients, hypertensive patients, which are in majority in uh, Indian states. And also uh, other um, conditions like allergic rhinitis, as asthma. I, since I'm learning, so I've finished this topic and I have come to know that uh, pranayam uh, works better in these people. Physiotherapists, uh, yes, they do have uh, breathing exercises. There are three to four sets of breathing exercises which we can uh, give um, a patient. But pranayam is much more than that, than only breathing exercises, which is needed for many uh, respiratory patients, cardio patients. So pranayam is a better option than breathing exercises. So a physiotherapist's main role is in ICU which uh, I don't, uh, as per my knowledge, yoga therapists uh, don't intervene in ICU. So physiotherapy in ICU patients, uh, the stroke patients, so the golden hours of saving them is very necessary, the stroke patients. So if you if you are an hour late or a two, uh, two hour late and uh, regenerating the nerve uh, pathways, the patient might lose uh, the hand. The uh, physiotherapist in this case also um, work on neuroplasticity. It is a term when if a area of brain is damaged. So instead of, I can't do this because my brain is not sending me signals. So my hand is very limp. So we, if it is dead, the part of the brain, the other surrounding new, neurons can be manipulated to do this action. So this is a role, is a major role what a physiotherapist can play. And if you do it a thousand times, this action, then in your brain, it is uh, etched as one time. So you have to keep uh, that going. And uh, the acute stage, as we call it, is very, very, very important for that. And of course, your PD patients. With, uh, we do... Uh, Actually, we are supposed to take the breathing exercises without any ventilator. But then uh, in the corona times, I have seen patients that they cannot breathe without the ventilator. 
so we have even taken exercises with the ventilator with the bipap cpap machines so that is a lot of improvement in the icu we have to uh, check the patient's issues or uh, go through the history then try them, promote them motivate them to do the exercises most in the in coronas um, i have worked in icu only during the corona time so i can give only that example they are very emotionally drained mentally they are very like okay i am done i have corona i have nowhere to go now so this is their uh, attitude so i hoped people knew about yoga before that so they could be ready for the moment emotionally mentally and spiritually and in fact the positivity i had two patients so uh, one was a uh, very positive in life i think that grandpa was 78 years old and he was doing yoga since childhood and there was again another patient um he uh, was not motivated he was very like nahi nahi ab to kya jeena hai uh, like that so we tried to motivate him uh, three four physiotherapists used to uh, tag along and just uh, make him enjoy the exercises he used to do and the other grandpa used to just um, could say okay physiotherapist hi ex, uh, hi hello and then he used to start all his, his exercises so the difference between these two patients was that the patient who was uh, positive was uh, walking around the icu to uh, meeting other patients like hi dekho main chal raha hu and we couldn't uh, get the other patient to ambulate as he himself had decided that this is uh, the end for him so i don't know what was the later part because i got shifted to another uh, icu so this is an example this is what yoga can do to you literally save you from uh, being uh, too serious about death i mean yes yoga therapy also teaches to involve death to uh, i can't explain it in words but uh, to accept it as it is this is a very 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 important thing what yoga has taught me and that is why after internship as soon as i finished soon as i had time i took the instructor level course so uh, yes yoga therapist assess clients from a holistic perspective physically energetically emotionally intellectually and also spiritually next slide so yes physio yoga i have come to know this term uh, during my internship so physio yoga is like yoga therapy but a more focus on physio physio yoga therapy is an approach to rehabilitation that combines evidence informed physical therapy and yoga therapy resulting in an holistic biopsychosocial approach to your uh, rehabilitation experience so more focus is given on your physical body but then not um, the the psychosocial part is also not omit, omitted like the mental and spiritual well being also not omitted in this so shelly prosco she is a physiotherapist a canadian physiotherapist and a yoga therapist so she is also an author speaker and educated dedicated to a uh, educator dedicated to empowering individuals to uh, create and sustain a meaningful life by teaching and advocating for the integration of yoga into modern healthcare she is a respected pioneer of physio yoga a combination of physiotherapy and yoga licensed healthcare pro professionals who are trained to apply yoga methods and philosophy to an individual with specific health concerns or uh, dysfunctions so yoga therapy and physio yoga have not much uh, difference between them uh, and so specific health person or dysfunctions can offer a safe and effective approach to healing using a biopsychosocial spiritual framework that promotes patient self efficacy empowerment and self healing next slide please so the benefits of physio yoga are uh, the benefits of yoga or physiotherapy yoga therapy as well so when practiced regularly the benefits are numerous physically it may result in improvement in uh, muscular strength endurance flexibility body awareness circulation digestion hormonal balance respiration immune function bone strength so normal uh, order benefits we uh, have from doing exercise 
mentally improvements uh, in alertness, concentration, and sleep patterns may be experienced as well as reduction in the stress response and in anxiety and improvements in your ability to relax. So some other common conditions addressed are it is important to note that it is not treating a condition rather than it is addressing the person that is experiencing symptoms with a certain condition. This is the perfect sentence for physio yoga or even yoga therapy. So it is not treating the condition. We are addressing the person. So the person as a whole is experiencing some symptoms like a diabetes or like hypertension. Those are symptoms when it comes to thinking of a person. So they don't only uh, treat diabetes, but as well as the person, like what happens in yoga therapy. So we are uh, facilitating the journey to health and well-being of people rather than treating a diagnosis. So this is the perfect way to take over, like it is a whole complete session. Physio yoga is like complete. So you do focus on physiotherapy. You do focus on the strength. You do focus on um, science part and as well as then you focus on mental, spiritual and your mind. So next slide, sir. Yes. So the similarities. So physiotherapy has its origins from yoga. Since yoga is much ancient, much more ancient than physiotherapy. So both yoga and physiotherapy share the underlying concepts such as a holistic approach towards health and well-being of an individual. So the earliest documented origins of actual physiotherapy as a professional group date back to 1813 for massage, manipulation and exercise. And whereas yoga was known, as, uh, known to us since the Indus Valley civilization, the fundamental positions or the postures are same in both fields, starting position being uh, like the star. We, in physiotherapy, we have four basic uh, positions for every exercise. That's supine which is uh, lying on your back. Then there's prone, which is uh, lying uh, on your stomach. Then there's standing position. And then there's kneeling position. So these are the basic four uh, positions. And as you can see, every asana starts with that. Tadasana is starting with the standing position. Shavasana starts with supine line position. Ardhalasana also we call, as that, uh, call that as straight, straight leg raises. And uh, Bittilasana, cat cow pose. That is also um, similar. So uh, next slide, sir. So a uh, research was conducted on the topic uh, yoga similar to physiotherapy in helping low back pain in diverse urban popula population. So this is a very important um, aspect of yoga that yoga is as helpful as physiotherapy to treat uh, low back pain. And in fact, much more uh, helpful than physical therapy. So the researchers found that the pain, that pain for pain and function, yoga and physiotherapy had similar results and both were better than the education group. So there were two groups. One was the control group. One was a, a physiotherapy group and then third group was a yoga group. So at 12 weeks, the yoga and physical therapy group, groups were less likely than the education group to use any pain medications. And improvements in yoga and physical therapy groups are maintained at the end of the 52 weeks. So it was a 52 week uh, long protocol. And it showed that yoga it was uh, very similar to physical therapy in treating low back pain. And low back pain is one of the most um, diagnosed pain in uh, patients. A lot of patients I treat on a regular daily basis are 50% uh, uh, low back pain. Either the disc, either the degeneration, either the space, either the nerve trap entrapment, either the disc pushing the nerve. There are a lot of uh, conditions to the back. Uh, next slide, sir. So the differences, the main part of this uh, session. So what is the differences? Breath, mindfulness, and even mantra chanting, which I forgot to mention. So these three 
terms are different we do use breath when we are asking patients athletes to do cardio we do tell them to breathe through the nose or uh, okay push the exhale through the mouth we do tell them but as long as uh, i've seen in yoga we do every movement with breath so when i tell patients uh, some back exercises i don't uh, necessarily uh, concentrate on breathing i do if they have some uh, issue uh, breath breathlessness or, or similar something like that then i do tell them that uh, they need to exhale inhale but not necessarily if a patient is doing the exercise well and good i don't tell them to uh, control their breathing so that is what is different and as we all know that breath is the life force prana of people so that is a very important uh, subject breath and then mindfulness as we all know how important mindfulness is so instead of that instead of worrying about each and every uh, thing in life we have to be mindful about what we need to do every day that is also necessary since i have seen patients come in they are just uh, worried with uh, a lot of stuff but we really don't have time to ask them that uh, do this do that no we are just here to treat them we treat them and then that's it there are um, protocols uh, where we are supposed to su suggest meditation take meditation but that's hardly practiced and meditation uh, is very a uh, relaxation not even meditation we only give relaxation uh, to the patient so there are two types of relaxation uh, physiotherapist uh, are taught jacob uh, michel uh, jacobson's and michel's relaxation techniques so that's nothing but shavasan that's also so in only uh, in one relaxation technique we go from head to toe in other technique we uh, come from toe to head so we uh, in one relaxation technique we tell the patient to uh, uh, tone up their muscles and then relax like uh, harden like make a fist and then relax the fist similar and the other one is similar to shavasan where we tell them to notice each and every part of the body if that is relaxed so and slow movement this is very important so the subtle movement which is uh, where perception of pain and breath in terms of us working with them changes things so why slow movement is important because breath and the perception of pain it changes in physiotherapy there is no, not necessary that we give a tempo to the movement okay this uh, we just tell the patient not to go fast not to go slow we don't tell the rhythm of uh, how the exercise should be done 1 2 3 we don't so because it changes things because you have to move very slowly and very mindfully and very cautiously and work below their pain threshold and then their body begins to open up this is very important so people don't know where to stop in many cases patients they are uh, some are very worried about their conditions and some people uh, don't give enough uh, thoughts towards their condition so the patients don't know where to stop even if we tell them that if you have uh, pain you need to stop they will be like nahi uh, karna hai karna hai theek hona hai and they don't stop when the pain uh, pain aggravates so that is why they again show up to physiotherapy sessions so this slow movement and breathe breathing with along with it is very important for that reason itself so a physiotherapist can offer evidence based exercises to reduce pain and restore balance but a yoga therapist can often be helpful in finding the best way to integrate integrate movement therapy into one's life so uh we all follow a uh, phys all physiotherapists follow a protocol which has evidence based research based so we read researches and then we integrate it into a patient's life and as yoga therapist also research based things are uh, give a uh, protocol is based but then they 
also slowly include the movement therapy. So what a physiotherapist does, the same thing a yoga therapist does, but subtly, which is more important. The patient should just go through all the stages of knowing that is what a yoga therapist does. So this multidimensional nature of yoga therapy is the missing link. So as uh, we have uh, come to know that in the beginning, that spiritual, intellectual, mental state is also considered in yoga. So it is multidimensional as a perspective from one person. So that is a whole link, missing link between physiotherapy and yoga. So emphasis on breath regulation, mindfulness during practice and importance given to maintenance of postures are some of the elements that differentiate yoga practices from physical exercises. So uh, physiotherapists uh, do one-on-one -on -one, um, patients. They do have time, but then as soon like a yoga therapist tells them to calm down, gives them a full... Um, gives them a uh, space to know themselves with the uh, breath, with the asanas, uh, with the meditation. We don't include that in our sessions, which is also a very, very, very important uh, part of existing. Yes. Next slide, please. Yes. So unlike physiotherapy, yoga also deals with universal energies. Yoga does believe in energies. It does connect boy, mind to body and soul on a spiritual level. Yoga asanas have shown significant reduction in the symptoms of anxiety and depression. So this was also a research conducted. So we don't um, technically have any exercises for anxiety and depression in physiotherapy. We can suggest some, but it depends on the physiotherapist's giving. So they can also decrease oxidative stress and uh, relief uh, tensions leading to better relaxation and concentration. Yoga exercises are performed uh, slowly and carefully in closed kinetic chains, isolated positions or static postures. This is also important. So we have uh, two types of exercises. Those are closed kinematic chains. There, uh, where the distal part, the hands, uh, palms, or the soles of the feet are uh, firmly on the placed on the ground, and then there are open kinetic, where uh, we don't have uh, support on the distal end of the body, far uh, the hands or the soles of the feet, for example. So physiotherapists do include a lot of. Uh, open kinetic chains and they are also uh, very contraindicated in um, injury uh, patients. So some exercise is contraindicated in some injury. So it is better in yoga that the exercises are closed kinetic, which are we have better balance and uh, better Uh, that may include active stretching, isometric muscle contractions, uh, mindful concentration, and appropriate breathing patterns. So this all is included in one asanas, whereas not everything is included in uh, while doing an exercise. So why is breath important? Uh, obviously, we have covered this point because it is a life force. And also mindfulness gives control over our emotions and improves brain function. That is why both of these aspects are important. So that is it. Thank you. I hope I did justice to the topic. Vaideji, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. I think your presentation speaks volume of you know your resolve and your dedication. You know to bring uh, you know both. Uh, I would say both, you know, wonderful aspects and, you know, the benefits of uh, both uh, physiotherapy and yoga into one. Uh, so I think I would say the sky is the limit for you. You know, you hope uh, one day, you know, you officially, I would say, you know, becomes like a structured and um, you know, like a structured, you know, um, what do you call it? Yes, a structured way and a, you know, official way of, uh, you know, Physio yoga therapy. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but yeah, absolutely great. And your own personal story, you know, I think that also inspired me. Uh, you know, I think uh, you mentioned about an injury and you know how it motivated and inspired you. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank yeah, you thank you so much. I would I would uh, you know request everyone to unmute and uh, give a big round of applause. Thank you so much, everyone. And I would encourage you know everyone uh, to unmute you know and ask a question, um, any clarification or question you have for Vaidehiji. Yes. So Vaidehiji. Yes, sir. Uh, are there any kind of uh, studies or practices where uh, there are holistic uh, trials going on where under certain categories or under certain conditions in your hospital settings, like in the Indian context, you have both the physiotherapist and the yoga teacher working together for some conditions. Have you come across? So I haven't come across both of them working on the same uh, research. But I have, I do know that uh, when I was researching for my project in uh, physiotherapy, I did come across a lot and a lot of research products, uh, projects which were to include yoga, how to include yoga in these conditions. Even if it is a simple muscle sprain or a spasm, a tightness, even I have seen uh, research on researchers on that. Ki how yoga can uh, improve this but I haven't come across uh, there might be I need to uh, go deeper into that but I haven't personally come across any therapist yoga therapist and uh, physiotherapist working maybe I would start to that would be great absolutely yeah, yeah. this would be a great initiative and as uh, in the pandemic or situation also everybody is acknowledging that mental health is very important the most important factor that was responsible for the recovery of the patients on ventilators was the mental health, as you were uh, very definitely, much definitely. Gave the cited the example, which was very important. And that is where is pain management the only goal to achieve health and well-being is a question like uh, maybe uh, it's not like we can only answer in one line or something. But these are some questions which I feel we can just have uh, or. The approach of yoga talks about not running away from pain, but embracing pain. Mm -hmm. And the only way we talk about pain is called as kleshas. If we are born in this world, then we are uh, we have to experience kleshas every moment. And that's the reason a yoga teacher and a practitioner teaches his students how to live happily with this kind of kleshas. Whereas which is in medical terms, increasing the pain threshold. Yeah. Whereas in other parts of uh, the systems, it's all about how you can put an end to that pain. So these are different approaches. Okay. And there are many other aspects, I think, but this discussion, which is initiated by your lecture, really will help all the physiotherapists and the community across the world when they see your lecture, hear it, it will inspire them to ask these questions. Can chanting Om, listening to the uh, chants, the vibrations, be and also a non-invasive practice which can be started in ICUs? Because there's no uh, intervention. Are, uh, sound uh, therapy, as you know, music therapy. That is in music case. therapy is being practiced. Yes. So. Uh, it, if in the West, music the, therapy can be practiced, can in Indian ICUs, mm -hmm. you can have these kind of chantings. And there are some places. But the thing is that if at all, the intensivists and the physicians or the consultants are happy with it, okay, then it goes. Yeah. If at all, the hospital, the administration is not, then it gets discarded. So I think if more and more healthcare professionals who are into yoga can come together and join hands, then such kind of more projects can be done where an integrative and holistic approach towards health um, can be practiced. And today's session was really a good step towards achieving this holistic health. For so me, I uh, congratulate pain was, pain was only pain for me before I joined yoga. 
इट वॉज ओनली अच्छा पेन है ओके आई नीड टू डू दिस दिस टू स्टॉप इट and after yoga it seems a lot different it is more than that so in the process of yoga the patient is been asked why he wants the pain to go away which may be a physiotherapist never asked the patient never we are and when he realizes making the pain go away with the machines <laughs> and yes but in yoga or yoga therapy you ask the patient why why he wants is running away from pain why he is not enjoying that and the moment he thinks that this is a different approach yeah there are certain level of neuroendocrine changes or you can call about neuroplasticity changes start happening and rather than having this kind of autoimmune response he starts accepting it and that is why many people get these real miraculous results what we can we can define this this has been talked about how it helps in restoring the hpa axis how it works on uh, facilitating your activation of the vagus nerve so that is how uh, i feel as healthcare professionals we have to work more on these aspects and create awareness in the healthcare community the problem today is medical community healthcare community itself is so much disintegrated mm-hmm. and um, it is unaware about these aspects of yoga because somewhere we feel it's something which is the moment you use the word spiritual it is confused with religious hmm. even today if you ask this a random survey people will say they are different what is different nobody can tell you what is different so spirituality is this asking the question why i am running away from the pain and if i don't want to have the pain what i do i want to do in my life Yeah. who am i mm. my body is a tool but for what i am going to use this tool for a laptop is there to have the processes a fan is there to move and give cool air so what is the purpose of me my body that i am having until you answer these questions only pain management not only for orthopedics physiotherapists for every physician achieving total health and well being is next to impossible and this was a really wonderful today's session hearty congratulations and i hope these questions will also stimulate and motivate others to contribute more and in the years to come we, the way we have physiotherapy as a four years masters in physiotherapy as a three years yeah full fledged courses soon i hope mm-hmm. we will have such kind of systems where yoga therapy will also become four five years of a course masters phd in yoga therapy so such kind of things i hope will come soon and for that these are some of the baby steps so hearty congratulations everyone please give a big round of applause to vaidhi ji thank you so much i just want to make some quick announcements i am you taking some time of bankim ji <laughs> so bankim ji is a strong supporter of one of our book recently published yoga for business ethics so those who have not read please go through it and uh, please give your feedbacks uh, how did you find the concepts integration of different stories and everything and another good news is today we have you can see here with me uh, a very interesting and beautiful book um, being launched on the occasion of our daughter her name is anvi her birthday is tomorrow valentine day <laughs> so we are coming up with this unique idea of like um, all those who have kids might be knowing about this um, character called as pepa anybody knows bankim ji do you 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 you, you have <laughs> elder uh... kid okay but all those who have small kids right puja ji yes great great pepa pig <laughs> pepa pig yes yes yeah absolutely so we have used that um, Uh, character and uh, we have created a theme based um, book and also there was a problem that we complain that our kids are watching these kind of so called cartoons which are culturally not relevant to our indian context so that was a kind of brainstorming thing that we had with uh, shwetambari ji and together and somewhere uh, we thought like let's have an indian version of these uh, platform cartoons 
where kids will be attracted because they already know what Pepa is. <laughs> but we will introduce them our Indian version where the tales will be, the stories will be ours. And uh, the interesting part is all the uh, inner uh, paintings and everything are based on a tribal art form, which is 500 years old. And it was used during the era of Shivaji Maharaj. And it was, it had the patronage of Shivaji Maharaj. And unfortunately, it's called as Chitrakati art style, which was done by the tribals of Sindhudurg area. Uh, in this 500 years, the art form, like Varli painting and others, it didn't receive much of interest and so it declined. Uh, but still, there is a Thakar community in Sindhudurg area even today. And one of uh, the leading artists has received Padma Shri this year in 2021. So it is a tribute and contribution to his work. And whole of the book is based on that Chitrakati art form, where another aspect is to introduce not only yoga, but through this art form, introduce our rich cultural heritage of such kind of uh, tribal art forms. So I hope uh, the kids will love it. The parents uh, can also encourage their kids. It's an activity-based book. Um, we are very eager to have all your feedbacks. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mji. Absolutely you... marvelous. Uh, just uh, on that book uh, thought, you know, and I'm sure here we have uh, a network of libraries, a huge, just a thought, you know, and I don't know whether we have that uh, similar system in India, uh, but uh, this book definitely would be great, you know, where it can uh, spread to the entire network of, you know, libraries in uh, small villages or cities, you know, uh, so, right, right. and yeah. um, I, I would definitely look forward to this book. And at least I will, um, what I, uh, this is a thought I have in mind that, you know, would, uh, once I have it, then uh, we'll approach, you know, the local uh, people I know in the libraries, you know, and then uh, probably see if we can, you know, uh, move that along. So, oh, yeah, that, so yeah, excited and uh, hearty congratulations to Anvi. Uh, for the book as well as her birthday tomorrow. <laughs> her first book at the age of six. Great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Way to go. Good. Okay, so tomorrow uh, we will have uh, Durga Das uh, Jisavan. Uh, the topic is uh, Natural Yogic Lifestyle for Disease Prevention and uh, Management. So please do join. And um, I would uh, probably have one more uh, before we uh, do the finishing prayer. I would request everyone to unmute and give a big round of applause to Vaidehiji for a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very good and very insightful. Okay, so Vaidehiji, would you uh, would you like to do the finishing prayer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sure. sure. Yeah. Everyone, please close your eyes. Relax. Calm your breath. Hold your hands into prayer positions. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahana Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karva Bahai Tejasina Vati Tumasum Vidhisha Bahai Om Shanti 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 Hi Rub your hands together. Place them on your eyes. Feel the warmth. Slowly open them. And namaste. Thank you.